Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part two of my Super Clodbuster build guide. Now last time, we got the servo in the chassis, and we got some of the links and the balls on the bottom, uh, the battery holder, and we got two of these axle assemblies built. And uh, I think that was up to step 14, let's have a look. Yep, that was step 14, so now we're going to carry on with step 15 and I'm going to go through and try and get this axle assembly complete and ready to fit onto the chassis. But as I explained in part 1, all these steps now up to step 26, which should be the completion of the, the axle assembly, um, you have to do twice. So, I've already done the one and completed the, uh, I think this is the front axle assembly, and the only difference, I think, uh, between the two is the way that this link is mounted so this is what we're going to try and uh, get to um, so let's get on with it the first part is 15 and fitting the motor pinion gear this should be pretty straightforward so obviously just get your motor I'm using the kit st stock motors and you get rid of that plastic tube the stock pinion is aluminium and I've been told that these wear out in no time at all they're made of cheese so my good friend Bob of Uncle Bob's RCs has sent me this hardened steel 32 pitch 13 booth upgrade. So I should be fitting these. You get your little grub screw and uh, insert that kind of halfway. I have put a little bit of thread lock on this. Although the kit says that you don't need to use, or that the instructions say you don't need to use any thread lock in this construction of the whole kit. And just get that onto the flat. And then you've got this tool provided, which gives you the distance to the top of the pinion. So just get that set and then give it a nip up. Just check that again. Yep, yeah, that's about right. So that's that step done and on step 16. So step 16 is attaching the motor. So first of all, get your two metal tubes, the BM5s. Fit those into the case there plastic part B7, it's got to go in that orientation, like so. Get your motor and make sure that the yellow wire is at the bottom and offer it in and secure that with your two 30mm, 3mm screws and you can see these are the darker of the screws, they're only dark screws that are in the uh, kit I think. Okay and with that attached I'm just going to turn the axle Yep, it's turning the motor, that seems like it's meshing up okay. Then you want part B11, and that's going to fit onto that there, and there is a hole in here and a pin in the casing to get uh, the right position. And hold that with a 10mm machine screw. And that screws into a captive nut that we put inside the gearbox uh, in the first part of the guide. So that's that, done. And to finish this step, put your 3mm nut into that captive area, screw in your 20mm machine screw. It should look like this when you're finished. Step 17 is attaching these smaller 5mm brass ball joints to the uh, suspension arms. And they're simply held by two 3mm nuts. So these parts C8, you just pop them in the top there, just hold them with my fingers, and then get your ball joints and simply screw them in. It's as simple as that and then do exactly the same for part C10. In step 18 we're going to attach those suspension arms. Uh, this is a bit fiddly I will warn you. Um, first thing you want to do is, as it shows here, get some grease. So I've just uh, painted some grease onto the balls or the kind of ball areas on the axle and the same for the inside of parts C1 and these parts of your uh, suspension arms. So make sure you get your orientation right, so your motor's at the front and this hole here is at the top. Get part C8 and you want to just clip that over the axle on this side and then part C1 fits over the other side of the ball. You can see that kind of clamps that around that ball and allows it to move as you can see. So now the tricky part is getting the screws in. So you need a 20mm machine screw, three for each of the C components. And then your 3mm nut goes in the back and again 
don't know if you can see that there that is a captive nut again and you basically you've just got to turn this round until you can get a screwdriver onto that screw another screw goes in the hole there at the bottom and then one on the other side like I say you can just turn this round to get it in the right place to do it up so that's the one side done and then exactly the same on the other side with part C10 and when it's finished it should look like this just note the orientation of the, uh, the gearbox itself where those ball joints are that will be for the shocks I think and the same on the other side in step 19 we're going to fit the lateral arms which are these F8 and F9 F9 is the one with the uh, screw mount hole in it and basically this time you want to get your gearbox assembly upside down in this orientation you're going to need 8 12mm screws for this step so first of all just get two screws into F8 and then F9 in the other arm so just make sure that these are pointing downwards as you look at it ok and they should look like that when fitted and then we've got these parts C6 these plastic parts that are going to fit in this gap in the suspension arm it's best if you rotate it round a bit and you can kind of get it seated into place like so and then it's just again the two 12mm screws just turn it around so I'll get access to those and there you go and obviously the same on the other side ok with that all complete it's on to step 20 which is attaching the axle stays which are these two metal brackets there's a long one and a short one so first of all I'm going to attach the short one and it needs to be in this orientation so you've got the bend pointing down and you've got that cut out there um, to the left and pointing forward you've got to turn over the uh, axle housing from its previous orientation so you've got that hole at the top you need one 6mm machine screw and that's going to go in the hole that's in the top there of the C-hub so that goes in the hole like so and then there's a, a threaded hole in the stay itself that that's going to screw into and then the same with the long stay again that cut out there pointing to the right this time and to the front and that uh, bend pointing downwards and we do the same with the 6mm screw through the other side of the axle housing now we don't attach the top ends of these stays at this point that comes later on what we've got to do now is get a 3x12 self tapper and a washer and it's got to go into that cut out there for the screw and screw into that hole there in the uh, blue plastic stay so just get that started and push it into the slot and then do it up and it should look like that when it's finished so on step 21 which is the assembly in the uprights so I'm going to start off with part D2 and you're going to get your bearing or bushing and put one in each side they are a really tight fit these which is always good and this one needs a bit of a pushing with my screwdriver or the other end of the screwdriver so get those two in then you need your wheel axle and it goes in through this side like so your 6mm washer just protects that bearing and then your pesky 5mm e-clip just holds that shaft in place so again copying the orientation of the diagram you'll know because you've got the uh, hex slot there to hold the captive nut and we'll put your nut in there, your 3mm nut and then for this one it's just 6mm brass ball joint into that nut so that's that done, so then get the other one which is part D1 um, you can't really get them mixed up because it is kind of stamped into the plastic there, the, the part number so we're going to do exactly the same with this one as we did the other one but this time again following the alignment that's a, a bigger hex in the, the plastic there which is going to take the ball connector nut which looks like that so that sits into that uh, 
hex and then simply screw in from underneath the uh, standard 6mm ball connector. Let's give that a nip up. Don't go too mad with these brass parts because um, they could snap quite easily if you go too crazy. So yeah, that's step 21. Step 22 is assembling the tie rods, which is simply a case of getting the blue ball ends and screwing those one on each end of the longer bar here, which is 118 mil, and the shorter one, which is 45 mil. And all you've got to do is get those so they measure up exactly with the diagrams there, they are to scale. And the other part of this step is to get part B2, 6 mil ball joint in the top, goes into a captive 3 mil nut underneath. So that's that one part. Then plastic part B6, and again, 6 mil brass ball joint, and that goes in the middle of the three holes into a captive 3 mil nut. Okay, so in step 23, we're gonna attach the uprights that we've already made onto uh, the gearbox assembly, or the axle assembly. So make sure you get your axle assembly in this orientation with the metal stays to the top. I'm gonna to do part D2 first, which is the one with just the one um, ball joint pointing down and it does show here applying grease to what I call kingpins but tell me to call them step screws so it's a good idea to get some grease on a brush and just put a bit of grease around the shoulder of that step screw or kingpin you also need to put a 4mm washer in the top and bottom uh, where this is going to mount again just put a bit of grease onto the plastic get the 4mm washer and that's going to sit in that recess in part D2, put a bit of grease on the top and the same for the other end or the other side and the grease should just hold those washers in place while we get it fitted put a little bit of grease on the uh, dog bone so again with the ball pointing down and to the front and slide D2 into place into your C-hub we'll have to uh, turn the axle to get it to line up with the dog bone yeah, it just goes in and simply get those kingpins and there's one in the top and obviously one in the bottom the holes in plastic part D2 are threaded so make sure you engage the threads don't cross thread it and get uh, both of these done up like so and do exactly the same to the side I'll just put that on and show you what it looks like ok so that's D1 fitted yeah, say exactly the same as the other side apart from you've got that uh, brass ball joint with the hex on it at the top and all we need to do now is to put your uh, bottom tie rod on which is this one and just to note these ball ends are, are different there's a bigger hole on one side than there is on the other I don't know if you can see when I turn over there's a small side and a large side obviously it's going to be easier if you try and push on the large side onto the ball connector so yeah, thanks Bob for that little tip. Yeah, I can just about pop that on with my thumb. But it takes a bit of force, I've got to say. So yeah, that's the end of step 23. Step 24 says attaching the steering arms, but what we're actually doing is building the servo saver and putting the short tie rod on. So here we go. We do this part B6, and that's going to go in the bottom of that housing there into the hole. Part B2 we've prepared is going to go into the top and you'll have to do this twice obviously and one of the uh, servo savers that top arm is going to point to the left like this and that's for the rear gearbox and it's going to be to the right there for the front gearbox. Anyway I've done the front so I shall be doing it this way for the rear then you've got your servo saver spring and this brass servo saver collar that goes in there and you pop that into the hole and by the way make sure you did grease up um, the parts B2 and B6 uh, where it goes into the hole so it pivots nice and smoothly then the fiddly bit is you've got to get this bolt which is a BB4 it's got a, a plain part of the shaft and then it's threaded machine thread on the end, you've got to squeeze that up underneath nope couldn't get it to go in so what I'm going to have to do is insert it into the plastic part first I think this is the only way I can get it to fit in 
yep, and then you can insert it like that. So yeah, you can't fit it in with the plastic parts inserted. Right, so we've got that far, now we've got to push this down and we've got to get your nylock nut um, and try and push that screw down and get it uh, engaged onto the thread of that bolt. I think I have to get it in the box spanner to do this. Yeah, that is a real pain to get on, I've got to say. But once you've got uh, it started, it's uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, just getting the threads initially engaged is the difficult part. And it says screw this up until there's three and a half millimeters of that bolt thread sticking out. I think it's a little bit more than that. But I have been told you can tighten this up a bit more to make it stiffer and uh, it helps the steering be a bit more responsive. So I think that's something you can adjust later uh, if you want to change the way the steering feels. But that feels about right to me at the moment, so we'll leave it as it is. So the last thing to do is get the short tie rod. Oh, there we go. And thank goodness that's step 24 complete. Next is step 25 where we're making up the gearbox guard assembly. Just simply parts F3, F2, and F1 and I find the easiest way to do this is you've got to get um, your 15mm screws, machine screws, I put them through those two holes and then put the nuts on, the, cap, the uh, flange nuts on the back ready, make sure that the holes in this part are pointing to the outside, get your kind of bumper, your F1 and then just slot it into place like so into these open kind of cups and then you can just hold on to those nuts and just tighten that up. It's a bit awkward to get your screwdriver in. Same for F2, put the 15mm uh, screws in already. The nuts on the end, again the holes on the outside and you've got like this longer part on the inside to the top and the bottom. And again just hold on to that and uh, tighten those screws up. So that's ready to go. In step 26, we're going to fit this to the gearbox or axle assembly. So all you're going to need for this step is four 3 by 12 self tappers and we're just going to fit this bumper or guard onto here like so. So you put your screw in and it's going to go through that metal axle brace and into the plastic gearbox housing. So it's simply one screw in there, and the other side, and one in there, and number four in the other side. And that's your gearbox axle assembly complete. Right then, as I said at the beginning, make two. <laughs> so you've got to do that all again. Um, and the only difference, like I said earlier, if I turn this round so they're both the same, you can see that the only difference is that these steering pivots here are pointing in different directions on the uh, servo savers. Um, when you turn them round and they're going to be like they are on the truck, they're both pointing in the same direction as you can see, but it works in a kind of a, a push-pull. So that's your steering left and right, so it's going to work. And uh, I think this is a good point to call a halt to this part of the build guide, part two gone on long enough if you've stuck with me this long thank you very much uh, I hope it's been useful and hope to see you in part three where we get this fantastic truck finished and up on its wheels well the chassis anyway cheers